Hi there, I'm Lafisa Latic and this is Across the Balkans. Today we've uncovered evidence of illegal pushbacks of refugees at the Croatian border, which in some cases have separated families. Hundreds of Afghans who fled their country following the Taliban takeover are trying to seek asylum in the EU. Many are stuck on the Bosnian side of the border, including some who assisted NATO forces in Afghanistan. According to EU legislation and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, prohibiting any individual from their right to apply for protection is a violation. The Croatian government has denied the allegations, saying they are working with the EU to prevent another migrant crisis. Samir Saifovic has this report for us from the border. Far from home, here in the fields of Velika Kladusha, in the northwestern tip of Bosnia, some 300 families from Afghanistan have found temporary shelter before they attempt to seek asylum in the European Union. I worked around four years uh, with the uh, British Army. I done two projects with the uh, American Marine in Afghanistan. Uh, so due to this reason, I was one of the targets of the Taliban. I left my country. Hassan, like many others, is stuck on the doorstep of the EU, at Bosnia's border with Croatia. I am here around two months and a half. Uh, in this location, it's around one month. Three times I tried to uh, go to the Croatia to request asylum, uh, but uh, it was unsuccessful and the police uh, arrested us, deported back to Bosnia. Uh, last Monday, when the police of uh, Sisak police, I think, or Boina police arrested us. They took all of our telephone, power bomb. If you ask of that four years girl about the Croatia, he can send you here. He, they learned very well the checkup. They went up to Croatia. When the police arrested, they check up all the family. And when they looking, they are learning this. So sometimes they are playing the role of Croatia police we together here. <laughs> Where is your telephone? Where is your life? <laughs> but it's really no laughing matter. With the consent of his father, nine-year-old Ahmed recalls his experience of being pushed back. Pushbacks of refugees are a clear violation of international human rights conventions. Despite that, the EU has failed to prevent its member states from such practices. A couple of tents away, we are approached by a family who tells us they were separated from their children by Croatian border police three months ago and have had no contact with them since. <laughs>
While some end up pushed back without their loved ones, others are hopeful they will succeed. Hours later, they too were pushed back and provided us with video and GPS locations from inside a police van owned and operated by the Croatian police. At another location, where the NGO SOS Bihać intervened, a 15-year-old boy was among those pushed back. Here, the International Organization for Migration refuses to accompany the minor. <laughs> Leaving him on the side of the road, claiming the law demanded so. Šta ću ja se dvoje djece, 13-14 godina? The government minister in charge of this part of Bosnia denies such an order exists. Ovdje kada je u pitanju ranjiva kategorija djece bez pratnje, kada se desi slučaj, znači da se isti nađu na terenu, prije svega obavijeste se predstavnici međunarodnih organizacija IOM-a, UNHCR-a, da uzmu tu djecu, da ih smjeste što je u prvi, znači centar za migracije, da li su to Borići, da li je to Lipa ili Sedra i tako dalje, onda se obavijesti centar za socijalni rad da dodijeli staratelja. Mi ne možemo pojmiti i zamisliti kroz šta oni prolaze. Da jedan roditelj sluša brisku djeteta jer se boji onog policajca, jer mu udara tatu, mamu. I da ono djete gleda to sve. Ne znam hoću li reći da su se usavršili, ali primijetimo u svakom slučaju pogoršanje. Nedavno smo imali grupu od 400 izbjeglica koji su bili ištambiljani kao krave, kao životinje. sa oznakama, kako se nam on rekli, puteva A, B, C, D, E, uz vidne modrice, ugrize pasa. Često se susrećujemo sa majkama koji kažu muž je uspio, čula sam se s njim, dijete nije s njima, nije ni sa mnom. On je mislio da je sa mnom, ja sam mislio da je s njim, dijete da više nema, možete li mu pomoći? Ne vidim ni jednu Evropsku ni svjetsku organizaciju koja se bori za ljudska prava, ne vidim ih ovdje, a prije koji su nam potrebni. We managed to find out the whereabouts of the two children who got separated from their parents during the pushback uh, at the border between Bosnia and Croatia. The two children are in Croatia and we're heading to the capital of Zagreb where we're hoping to speak to the caretaker. There's no warm welcome at the Dugava Migration Center, where I've been told the two accompanied children ended up. After introducing myself to the staff at the gate and explaining the purpose of our visit, no one from the institution was able to talk to us. A short while later, we were approached by the police for the second time, but now they asked for our IDs. When asked why, the officer's reply was, you are in the zone of objects. It sounded serious enough for me to comply. I wanted to know for sure where the two children are whose parents are stuck in Bosnia, but trying to get answers from Croatia's Missing Persons Institute, the Red Cross and Interior Ministry all led to a dead end. The government, meanwhile, seems to have a very clear idea of what its strategy is when it comes to refugees. I think that our debate uh, on this issue, where we should strengthen the external borders of the European Union, is critical 
facing the post-Afghanistan new circumstances. For humanitarian organizations such as Are You Serious in Zagreb, clear evidence of human rights violations are now public secrets impossible to deny. Pushback always has the same dimension, and that is the crushing of human rights and the enjoyment of people. And it is not important whether the family is divided or the same person is the same person. It is a human being. The responsibility of this country is not to kill young people on the border, but to take care of these people. And to give them the opportunity to ask for asylum, because it is their right. If we are already the European Union, koja počiva na načelima unity in diversity, onda nek se tako počinju i ponašati i neka prestanu zatvarati oči. While the political debate of how to handle the flow of migrants seems never ending, more than 18,000 child asylum seekers went missing since arriving in Europe between 2018 and 2020, according to data collected by Lost in Europe across 30 countries. I can only hope the ones I met here won't be among those figures in the future. We invited a representative of Croatia's interior ministry to come on the show to respond to our report, but we haven't received a response as of now. So uh, let's speak to Tea Vidović, a migration expert at the Croatian Center for Peace Studies in Zagreb. Tea, thanks for coming in on the show. Uh, now, we've seen uh, in Semir's story there some strong accusations against the Croatian police. The victims say the pushbacks included brutal, violent behavior and this is not the first time uh, they have been accused of pushing refugees back to Bosnia. So uh, what are your findings? Um, how are these people being treated at the border between Bosnia and Croatia? Well, the findings that we know are based on the testimonies received from the people. Uh, we are in the communication with the organizations working in Bosnia, uh, but also people are contacting us on our official telephone line. Uh, where people uh, are actually asking for the support to access the asylum system. Uh, the accusations uh, mentioning violence and brutal behavior of the Croatian police towards the people are uh, present for several years. Uh, of course, from time to time, the, the type of the violence, the method, change, but we still haven't seen any consequences of uh, the, the acts that are uh, being said. So uh, we, what we actually are uh, asking from the government and from the European Commission is that uh, there are consequences for the people that are doing uh, those br brutal actions from the people on, uh, towards the people on the border. Right. Because as we can see at the moment on, on, the, um, on the television from the f footage that you have, it's uh, vulnerable groups, it's women, it's children, it's elderly people, and uh, they're living in unhuman conditions. Uh, and yeah, maybe we can talk a bit more about the system in Bosnia, but yeah, the, the current situation is not getting any better and uh, we right. do not see uh, right. any, any uh, statement from the uh, authorities. Uh, we've covered the, situ the situation in Bosnia too, quite a dire um, a situation there, a lack of basic necessities for those uh, refugees, especially for those vulnerable groups that you are mentioning. Uh, let's go back to Croatian police. Uh, why is the Croatian police doing these pushbacks? Um, what's the EU policy when it comes to this? Uh, are the Croatian authorities in, in communication with the EU uh, officials and why are we seeing this at the border? Well, unfortunately, we do not have a concrete communication with the Ministry of Interior in Croatia. The communication is closed. But uh, from the political development that we are following, uh, uh, you know that the Croatia is a candidate to enter the Schengen. Uh, also, we are following the development of the European Pact on Migration and Asylum. So what it's actually happened on the border between Croatia and Bosnia we uh, believe it, it's, uh, it's a European policy. The, same, the similar uh, things are happening on other European borders. So it's a common European policy. 
uh, and it goes in line with the with the with the state with the with the actually proposals that we are seeing in the pact. It's the externalization of the asylum policy. It's uh, actually a very low number of people being accepted uh, within the asylum system. So if we are observing the, the numbers for the 2021, in Croatia, there were only around 15 uh, asylum uh, being accepted right. uh, to the Croatia. And there is a, a, a big list of people trying to access to the exactly. asylum Exactly. According to the uh, IOM, the UN Migration Agency, there will soon be more Afghan asylum seekers in the Balkans than those of any other country. Um, as you mentioned, uh, other countries too. Greece just finished the border wall. Croatia is pushing them back. So if there isn't a common solution found, how big could this uh, crisis get soon? Well, I don't believe we are going to see uh, what we have seen in 2015, and it's a clear message that the European politicians have sent. What we are probably going to see is more suffering, more deaths on the border, uh, more brutal behavior towards the officials uh, of the EU, uh, towards the people that are trying to access to the security. Uh, we in the Center for Peace Studies have sent our proposals to the government, to the European Commission, that they should observe the uh, uh, activating the mechanism of temporary protection so that the people are not in, in the vulnerable position that they are at the moment, especially people coming from Afghanistan, because it's, it's a clear uh, picture that they cannot not return to the country that they have uh, run away from. Uh, the situation in Bosnia is such that there is not enough capacity for all the people that are presently uh, there because uh, there is much more people than the capacities uh, are accepting. And also there are camps opening with uh, not enough um, uh, capacities for the win winter conditions that are occurring. So uh, what we are actually asking for from the Croatian uh, authorities, but also European Union, is that, that uh, there is a creation of uh, legal paths, uh, secure paths uh, for the people, so that they do not have to take unsecure routes to enter uh, European ter territory and actually uh, safety uh, above their head. Right. And the that, uh, just not... briefly, have you received any response uh, upon your request to the EU officials? No, uh, unfortunately not. Yeah. We are following the situation. There will be a resettlement forum in October. We will see what, uh, what they will decide. But for the moment, we actually also do not see any new people coming uh, in the system, but only new phone calls and new asks for help uh, to uh, try to support people entering the asylum system. And as you mentioned, a very harsh uh, Balkan winter is uh, is coming uh, soon, in a couple of months. Thea Vidovic, thanks so much uh, for all that uh, info uh, for us and your analysis. She's a migration expert at the Creation Center for Peace Studies in Zagreb. Now let's go to another border that's reached the boiling point in recent days. But this time it's not the refugee crisis. It's the long-standing Balkan issue of tension between Kosovo and Serbia. It started with a ban on cars with Serbian license plates entering Kosovo. And it escalated to where Serbia's president is sending tanks to the border. Let's take a closer look at what's happening there. Ju siguroj se veprimet e ndërmora sot nga organet kompetente për zbatimin e kësoj marveshje për levizit lirë nuk janë drejtuara kundur qëtëtorve sërë. Tensions in Kosovo have soared after the government forced Serbian license plates to be removed from vehicles entering Kosovo and Serbs saw the move as a direct provocation against them. For days, Kosovar Serbs blocked the border by parking their trucks in front of the Jarinje and Burnak crossings between Kosovo and Serbia. Drivers from Serbia are now obligated to hide or remove their registration and buy a new temporary plate which costs 5 euros for 60 days validity. It's a tit-for-tat move. The same restriction has applied to Kosovar drivers in Serbia for the last 10 years. But Serbia called Kosovo's move criminal and responded by sending tanks and fighter jets to the border. 
Smatramo neprimerenim izjave u kojima se Beograd i Prištinima izjednačavaju i krivica prebacuje na ove strane. Srbija uvek spremna da nastavi dijalog u Briselu, ali neće da prihvati rešenja nametnute jednostranim kriminalnim akcijama. The high representative of the EU for foreign affairs has called on both nations to unconditionally de-escalate the situation and called any further provocations and actions unacceptable. Talks mediated by the EU aimed at resolving the long-standing dispute between Serbia and Kosovo are underway, but have made little progress so far. EU membership for both countries depends on normalizing their relations. But this latest escalation has showed once again how difficult it is to overcome the painful legacy of the past. Afrim Hoti is a professor of international law at the University of Pristina and he joins us now. Afrim, thanks for coming in on the show. Now, legally, are both countries at fault here? And how do you see the current situation at the Kosovo-Serbia border? Actually, um, the situation it seems as it's proved to be complicated uh, this, um, the last week. And this is not the first, um, first time happening between uh, Kosovo and Serbia because uh, uh, for a long time international community is trying to, to build and to establish kind of democracy but under uh, contested statehood as Kosovo is still not uh, internationally recognized as it's not still member of, of United Nations. Uh, Serbia, time to time, is increasing the tensions using and instrumentalizing the Serbian minority in northern, northern part of Kosovo and uh, having into the consideration the change of, uh, of, the, of the power or the new government in Kosovo and introducing the policy of reciprocity with the Republic of Serbia, uh, this was used by, by both parties to, first of all, uh, stop the communication and the second of all, uh, arise the tension between, between uh, both sides as uh, police uh, forces are now uh, protecting uh, the border with Serbia and, and implementing the decision of the Kosovo government to, to implement the reciprocity in terms of using the, the documents and, and recognizing the document by the Serbian side. Uh, at the other side, Serbia is uh, doing kind of uh, maneuvers or, or military campaigns trying to press and to make some pressure toward the Kosovo authorities because as it is widely known, right. uh, Kosovo is still not recognized and as long right. as uh, this situation continues to be, then seems the tension will, will remain there. Uh, Afrim, the NATO Secretary General uh, tweeted after speaking to the Serbian President and Kosovo's Prime Minister about the need for both uh, countries to de-escalate and return to dialogue. Uh, what can NATO do to deal with the crisis currently that we are seeing? Uh, I think it is uh, obvious for both sides, Serbia and Kosovo, that um, there is a resolution 1244 of United Nations still in force. And uh, such a document is uh, entitling NATO to keep a, a military mission in Kosovo. Uh, we have um, a military presence of, uh, of NATO in Kosovo, which is operating under K4, and seems that the Secretary General already uh, called both parties to stick to the dialogue, to turn to the, to the negotiation tables because but, the, the NATO forces are there and uh, there will serve as guarantee for not uh, allowing the escalation to the Afrim, open conflict. But Afrim, why are both sides equally blamed for the tension by the EU and NATO officials uh, both? I mean, all started with Kosovo government introducing the same measure uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Serbia is applying for 10 years now. So why equally blaming both countries in this? Actually, there was an agreement between Kosovo and Serbia to, uh, to allow the certain movements which were present till, uh, till a week ago, till 15th of September. But such an agreement already expired. Under these circumstances, Kosovo government was not ready to renew such, a, such agreement with the Republic of Serbia. And instead, they introduced this kind of, of new policy in terms of, of, of uh, applying the reciprocity with, uh, with Serbs. Something which was uh, not, uh, something like this was not um, accepted by Serbian side, and uh, this actually was used as, uh, as an argument uh, for tensions and possible escalation to the conflict. 
Uh, Afrim, in the meantime, uh, Moscow is blaming only Pristina for the late, latest escalation at the border. Uh, the Russian ambassador himself visited the border. Uh, he went to Yarinya border crossing and he gave his full support to Belgrade. Uh, in case this further escalates, can we expect a stronger Russia's involvement in the crisis? Uh, yes, definitely. Russia is involved directly or indirectly all the time. And uh, this was really uh, ridiculous and it was a, a very interesting point seeing uh, the diplomat uh, inspecting the, the military forces in, in uh, Serbia. This, uh, more than this, uh, it shows uh, the political discourse Republic of Serbia is following and uh, the kind of, kind of so-called democracy because uh, at one side, the uh, regime in Belgrade is uh, promoting the EU agenda and the democratic values. At the other side, it seems that uh, practically uh, nothing has changed or at least a very little bit has changed uh, with the new regime comparing to the Milosevic regime. Uh, because, uh, because as it can be seen uh, vitally, uh, the regime is following the instruction from Moscow and Moscow is still uh, refusing to accept the new realities and is trying uh, blocking Kosovo in its way to full uh, statehood. Afrim Hoti in Pristina, they are an international law expert. Thanks for watching this episode of Across the Balkans. See you next time from me and the team. Bye-bye for now.